When we talk about monogamy, um, for many people it, it comes in different contexts. Like, I would say, you know, if you looked at like the numbers of people that seem to practice some form of monogamy versus polygamy, polygamy is quite quite rare. In fact, it's it's outlawed <laughs> in Utah. Uh, you know, if there were times when the, the Mormon religion, you know, is it was quite common, and and it just didn't fit and sync with the culture at large, and so forth. But I think if you even pulled it back a little further, you would see that many people, if not most people, go through what we would call serial monogamy. You know, they go through monogamous assignments. Some of them last 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, 60 years. Uh, That's a witness in my, on my biological father's side. Harry, we called him, and Lillian were married for 57 years. So there was that witness of, of hanging in there through all of it, you know, for better or for worse, and really hanging in there and working it. I think there's, that's the aspect of what seems to be, we'll call them assignments, like guided assignments from the Holy Spirit. An assignment, you know, the ultimate assignment is to let go of the ego, and to see an experience of unified perception that's, that, that is really the glory of the happy dream or the real world. That's where it's all headed. But in terms of assignments, the, the temptation is to change something in the world to find happiness. And you could apply that to changing partners, you know, to find happiness. Where the ego is basically, you know, it's one of its things that it's striving for is maximizing pleasure. And so that's where it comes into what I would call more like Dixie Cup relationships, you know. Just take a little sip of paper, throw it away, and get the next one and throw it away. And I've used that example over the years, whereas assignments are more guided commitments. And they're guided by the Spirit, because the Spirit knows what would help maximize healing, maximize time. When you go higher up in consciousness, you start to reach these states where you start to realize that all relationships are maximal. You know, whether it's a casual encounter in the elevator that Jesus talks about, or seemingly a fairly intense teaching-learning situation in which they appear to separate, or a lifelong partnership, that you reach a state of consciousness. But as you're going through the process, that idea of committing to, to work it out and to use the mirroring and the reflecting that's going on in a very helpful way to undo as many previous mistakes and undo false beliefs, you do see that there's a value to that. And that's where the assignments come in. I mean, I have worked with a lot of people around the world where, where it seems like they, they tried other things and, and there was just a lot of intensity and complexities that came in. Uh, and, it, and ultimately it came down to, to basically to, to the root, which is linear time. Like I've, I did work with a man who was wanting to have, you know, two partners and, and have a threesome. And he explored that and experimented with that. And there was enormous, as you might imagine, jealousies and intensities. Just like a, it was like a, a, a cooker on the skillet all the time. It was just extreme and intense. And ultimately, it, it went beyond the sexuality. It went down to quality time. Like, <laughs> I want quality time here. Time to talk things through and work things out and a feeling like, like it was being somehow splintered out and so forth. So, ultimately, you know, you come deeper and deeper into that state of high mind training and, and, and non-judgment, but um, that has just been something that's been given to me from the Spirit over the years of the, of the helpfulness of those assignments. And everything in time and space is temporary, so, we're, you know, there's no a attempt to say that these have to be, uh, you know, huge, long, long, long-term assignments. That may, they may play out that way, but there is a sense that, that each one is undoing as much egoic 
filters and interference as, as possible during those assignments. And it's in some sense, it's kind of like even coming to a, like a seeming community like this and hanging in there. There's probably times where you felt, I am out of here. Like, <laughs> four times. <laughs> you had four I'm out of there times that came up. And, you know, when it gets to feel like a real cooker, like an emotional intensity, like I think maybe it'd be easier for me to leave than to stay. And those are the same kind of things that, of course, come up in relationships as well. This is just a, like relationships are almost like a microcosm of, of that broader experience. And maybe even in a broader context, when people have suicide thoughts, they're thinking, I'm out of here, <laughs> not in a time or space way, but I'm out of this dimension. <laughs> you know, I want out of this dimension because it's got to be better, you know, when people feel like they gotta just want to exit and go off into another experience. But, but still, the Spirit calls us to look within, you know, and face face what's unconscious and and let it up and let it out and heal.